So we've got some of the machines out. What I want to do is I want to do a portable machine discussion, and then we'll probably cut to another episode and do a stationary wall mount type, like the 1322, the the uh, 700, the the, the the big boy. Uh, so we're gonna kind of work through the mobile line. I think we'll probably not talk much about the big, you know, heated versions, mm -hmm. um, but I want to talk about some of the differences. What I'm not going to talk about, I probably will. When I'm, always, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you the price of something, and I always tell you. But what I'm planning to do, or what I'm hoping to accomplish, with some of the more stout machines. But anyway, we, we won't get into that. So I've been sitting here. I got here at nine o'clock this morning, and I've been obsessing over the product line. And so now I'm going to pull pull from Josh's brain some of the details. So let's start with 1122. Uh, so we'll probably pick them up, put them on the table here. So I'm going to grab the 1122. We'll talk about the type of pump and why and how, and then we'll compare that to the platform, the bigger platform, the 2017 and 2020. 1122 TST, this is the one I've been selling for several years now. It's right. the one I've had for almost a decade. Uh, this is a 15 amp ready uh, version. The, the, the 1122 is the U.S. variant of the 1152, which they have on the box. So mm -hmm. don't panic. If you get one on the box, there's 1152, and then on the side, there's a sticker for a U.S. spec. So what, what these come with and what you guys send these with is a GFI cord. Yes, right? sir. So, so basically what happens is you guys import these, you bring these into the U.S., and then we ship them over to Germany, and then they do they have to do a different motor right so the, the electric the motor is a different winding than the 1152 right set the United, for 110 volt well in the the u.s there's two differences between our standard electricity and their standard electricity uh they are standard at 220 we're standard at 110 to 120 yep and they also have a standard at 50 hertz and we're at 60 and we're at 60 hertz right. which uh i believe that the five is a indication right. of the hertz so one of the nice things about the 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 1152 is that it gets they get more flow out of it. Right? right. They get more pressure and flow out of theirs because they have more more current. They have more juice, if you will. Yep. Bigger horse pulling the cart. So and that's where some of the bigger machines come in, which we'll talk about that that aren't as um, I guess ready and set up for what I'm using this for, which is washing cars. So the the magic of the 1122 is this little black box here, uh, the the pressure switch. And so this the, the the beauty of this is when I pull the trigger, it turns on. When I release it, it turns off. That's on right. off on off on off, which we talked about yesterday. Probably not smart to do. No don't, trigger jockey. Don't be a trigger jockey. But it does give you the ability to, for it to turn on and off. Right. So what is the, the what's the size of this pump? You know. So what, how do we size these things? How do we explain that to people? All right. Sorry, I stopped the camera there, and we didn't like the angle. So we're continuing our discussion here. So you were talking about pump pump head. models. Pump models. <clears throat> okay. So the 1122, 1322, and 1622 use the Krenzler Model AZ okay. pump, which has a 14 millimeter plunger. And that's uh -huh. our plunger size. Um, that is the, you know, the basically one of the primary indicators of or drives what size, what amount of flow that we can produce. Uh -huh. The, uh, you know, the limitations of flow are the plunger size, and then as we discussed with the other series, the uh, wobble angle. Uh -huh. So, uh, you know, this pump is their. The smallest pump that we carry of theirs, mm -hmm. they also have a 12 millimeter, but you know we don't carry that one. That one's more of a consumer grade. I would still place this in a light industrial grade mm -hmm. or a commercial grade series. Uh, it's not a constant duty system. I wouldn't want to run it for 12 hours a day every single day because that might you, you're not going to see the service life le uh, live up to the expectations mm -hmm. um, on the on a 12 millimeter pump versus this. Well, even yeah. So your service life with a 12 millimeter would be even shorter than this. But but, with, even, but even this is not designed to run all day every day. Not all day every day. Now, but, you know, six hours a day, seven days a week. You know, yeah. you know, using it for an hour and then taking a couple hours off. It still is. This is this is overkill for what we're using. Absolutely. For, for sure. Yeah. For 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 an occasional use, 
uh, hour a week or even a couple hours a week. Yeah, it's a, um, it's a, this I'm, is a 25 year deal. Right, you know? exactly. And, and I've serviced them about that old too. Yeah. yeah. So, so this pump, one of the ways you can tell, which made perfect sense to me, is you can just look at the look at the bolts on the for the you know, the check valves. Right. If if our can... customers are calling in for tech support uh -huh. and they can't find any markings on the machine, whether they've rubbed off or they just aren't looking in the right places, mm -hmm. the valve caps are usually the first question that that we'll look to. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to markings on the on the faceplate of the transmission housing to mm -hmm. give us hints as to what model pump that they're working with yeah. and then what machine they have. So if you haven't watched the deep dive, this machine needs to be laid on its back. So just briefly explain why we're doing this, why when in operation you're, you're, you need to lay it down like so. Why do we do that? So the, the faceplate of the pump has ports in the back of it inside the oil housing that lubricate the oil seals. Mm -hmm. uh, and for it to do that, you have to be laying in the downward position so that the oil is up against the housing. Okay. <clears throat> if you are operating in the upright position, the oil is just gonna lay into the back of the housing and isn't gonna completely lubricate that, that particular series of components. Mm -hmm. It also inhibits the ability for the transmission of, of temperature between the valve housing and the transmission housing. Most of the time, the heat's going from transmission housing to the valve housing mm -hmm. because the water that's passing through is carrying the heat away from mm -hmm. the pump. Uh, so it's designed to operate like so, hence the shelf mount machines like the 1322 and stuff are already in that, that configuration. Right. So let's grab a 2017 and talk about, so let's kind of lift that sucker up here. So this one, I think weighs roughly 80 pounds or closer to 100, and you can see this slight size difference. Now, I've never considered any of these because of the way that it's configured. After spending some time with you, I now know why it's getting the spec that's getting. So this is rated at 1,400 PSI, 2.1 gallons per minute. Right. Has the total stop or on off. This one is rated at uh, 1,900 psi and 1.6 gallons per minute, right. uh, and it doesn't notice it doesn't have that black box. Actually, 1,600 psi. Oh, 16. 1. Oh, yeah. That okay. So 1,600 psi, 1. 1.7 gpm, 1.6, 1. 1.7, uh, and uh, but this is a different size pump. Right. So we have the the 14 millimeter pump with the AZ. Right. This pump model is the APG18, mm -hmm. so it's an 18 millimeter plunger. Mm -hmm. So you can see both the... Yeah, so the, there's a difference in size. Right, the, the diameter of the plunger is about 25% greater, mm -hmm. and then the length of the plunger gives it a longer stroke. So the cylinder size inside the pump allows for higher flow rates. Mm -hmm. So this pump is used on machines that both gas and electric pressure washers that go up to three and a half gallons per minute. Hmm. So why are they restricting it to such low flow? Uh, is it because, I guess it's because it's a 15 amp rated machine. Well, the, the motor driving the, the pump mm -hmm. is the one limitation. And then they've selected a wobble plate to give it that output because their, I guess, peak efficiency curve for cleaning, multiple cleaning yeah. applications yes, is okay. that a little it, more pressure so th these come with a 3.0 nozzle on it right so it you know it, it it's it's sacrificing some flow for for pressure right and so there the this this is less uh, car washing friendly because we generally want more water. So why couldn't I, couldn't I just buy this machine and um, open it up, put a 4.0 or 4.5 on the thing and wouldn't I get more flow? So you will get more flow up to a certain point. Your peak flow and your peak pressure aren't always achieved together. Right. Okay, so your absolute max flow is gonna be measured whenever you have no restriction on the, yeah, on the a, output. 100 PSI or right. something, right. At a negligible pressure, uh -huh. you'll get whatever the very maximum capability of the machine is, and you can you know, do your bucket test to get your mm -hmm. rating for that. On our uh, flow meters, we've measured this at probably about 1.8 or 1.9 with no nozzles on at all without any okay. restriction. So I'm not gonna gain a whole heck of a lot just by opening it up. And the other disadvantage for washing cars is this is just gonna run. Right. It just runs constant. Now, the advantage is this is a more stout, more professional grade pump, right? So this is right. this is designed to run. It, 
as opposed to any other pressure washers that you find on the market, if you start this thing up and run it the entire time you're cleaning your, your car, yeah. you're not go the pump is not going to suffer. It's not breaking a sweat. Right. Now, and these if you are pretty run, quiet. If you run other brands of pressure washer pumps for long periods of time and bypass when the trigger's released and you're not yeah. spraying, you're creating more so significant wear on the pump than you do with a Krenzel. And then these come with, uh, is this still a quarter inch hose? Yeah, same, same hose on both? Yes, sir. Okay, so same Actually, both. Same exact hose. Yeah, same hose, reel, everything. So now we have the 2020. I don't know if we can fit this sucker up or we're gonna test the tensile strength of your toolbox here. <coughs> That's all right. Yeah, she can handle it. it. Nope. So by the way, these come, like this comes as a 2017 even without the T, which means it wouldn't have a hose reel. Correct. Um, this one comes in three configurations. It comes in a 2020, a 2020 NG for no GFI, right. and so a 2020 T, or same plug, which, no GFI. which has the, which has the, the um, Sans the hose. hose reel. So same hose reel as the others. Uh, this is the same configuration, right? Same 18 millimeter plunger. So the pump is the same. Right. Uh, this just has a different <coughs> wobble in it. Right, and this is also a two horsepower motor and that's a 1.5 horsepower motor. This so is the, the 1.5, okay. Yeah. So they, they have, we have a different, same pump head, different electric, different uh, stator, different Well, the, the windings are, are virtually the same. It's just the configuration of the, um, just the wiring is basically a little different. Okay, okay. So that's how we get more pressure, a little more flow, but you're going to have to plug this into, and you can even see from the power plug, you're going to have to plug this into a 20 amp circuit, right? In order, in order to get the, you know, the, the, to run this thing. Um, so let's see, what has nozzle they put on these? Also 3.0. Also 3.0. So as you increase the horsepower output of the motor, you're getting that extra boost of the of pressure and flow. Got it. So what I'm interested in is, uh, I, I said I wasn't going to mention this, but what in my perfect world, uh, Krenzel, if you're listening, would be to have this for a 20 amp application with the magic black box on there. Right. With a different wobble that gets me, I mean, how many GPM do you think we can get out of this sucker? High twos, low threes? Yeah, probably high twos. At a thousand three. PSI or, well, this one here, if I put my gauge on it and my real world testing, I'm getting 950 PSI right. at the, with the drivetrain loss, if you will, the hose loss and the, you know, the right angle loss. So I run this at around 950 PSI and I'm getting about 1.8 GPM mm -hmm. on a, on a 1400 PSI rated machine. So I think we would target, you know, 1400 at the pump head. And if we could get, you know, three GPM and we'd change the darn world. So right. Anyway, that, that would be a, that would be a dream. And Someday. And the valve housing on this pump is also equipped with the ability to, to have yeah. a pres uh, pressure switch uh, that would just be an evolution of this system. Yeah. But these two, so for car in their current state, and part of the reason why I've never launched or never had these in our lineup, uh, in my lineup, they're, they're available. I mean, you can buy them. I can order them for you. Uh, this one is, I think, what did I do to run down the pricing on these? These, these sell for... Um, this one's 1690, uh, of course 1190, which has been in my store forever. And then this, uh, the, the 2017 is uh, 1620. So 1690, 1620, 11, 1190. So you're, you're pricing, you're, you know, five, 500 bucks more for these, depending on the configuration, whether you want a little more pressure, or a little less flow. But these I've never put in the store because they don't turn off. Mm -hmm. you know, so they're not quite as, uh, and they don't have as much flow as the lesser model, just the way it's configured. Uh, and that's why I've never, I've never incorporated these. And plus, these are a lot harder to ship. Yes, they you know? can't be shipped to UPS because due to the weight and the way that they're boxed, yeah. you know, they come in, a, in an upright box just like the 1122. But, um, but another 20, 25 pounds, extra dimensions. And you can see this one here. Yep. Was a shipping. Didn't make hit. it all. Didn't make it unscathed, no. unfortunately. Yeah. So these we would ship on a pallet. So we're looking, you know, hundred and fifty dollars plus, depending on where we're shipping it to, to ship one of these, one of these tanks. And they are considerably heavier, even though it looks pretty much the same. That eighteen millimeter pump is mm -hmm. is hefty. 
Uh, so what I, you know, what what in, again in a perfect world we would have some sort of pressure switch on the thing. Um, but these, you know, if you're looking for uh, more output, a little bit more industrial capability, I mean, these suckers are available in their current state. You can run it. They're super quiet. I yeah. mean, even running constant, especially in bypass mode. I mean, it's almost. I mean. Well, and it's, it's quieter the, the sound that you're more likely to stand out is not the sound of the motor, but the sound of the cleaning tools and the actual pressure right. washing. Right. You know, especially if you're using a turbo nozzle, if you're hitting your garage floor, mm -hmm. you know, you're hearing the turbo nozzle, you're not hearing the motor as yeah. loud. All right, so let's, I don't think we're going to lift these up, so we might crouch down. I guess we can just leave these here. So let's talk about the quadros. All right. So these are clearly a different configuration. Quadro meaning four wheels. Four wheels. Pretty I know, simple. it's very, very creative. So 399, 499 look the same. Look the same, just like your 2017 and your 2020. So they take that pump, they turn it on its side, they put it on four wheels. Right. What else is different about these things? So the starting from you know, the supply end, on the back end of any of your quadros, there is a float tank that, so as the, when you hook up your garden hose supply, you turn on your water supply to the pressure washer, it fills the float tank, shuts off just like the, you know, toilet tank in mm -hmm. your home. And so that um, mitigates some inadequate flow issues that you might have if you've got a water supply that's so surging. If you're on a farm that has a pump, uh, you know, a well with a pump, I've had many guys ask me about that. Right, if your I wife didn't... insists upon washing clothes while you're car wa washing your car, mm. or, you know, any other. Uh... Yeah, and your home doesn't have proper, you know, proper output. Right. Uh, you know, especially if you're on a well, uh, that's where, okay, that makes sense. So that, so, so that will fill ahead of time and feed, so the pump is pulling from that tank and then your supply line is constantly feeding that so it just gives you a buffer right to eliminate we talked a lot about cavitation and problems that happen when you don't feed proper water in our in our detailed deep dive series so that's where this type of thing comes in now they don't make an 1122 a 14 millimeter version of this type right? no so they did the 399 is the 15 amp Mm -hmm. which would be equivalent to the 2017. Right. The 499 is the 20 amp, which is equivalent to the 2020. 2020. Right. Uh, and then they have a 599, which is a, this is this a different pump? Or is that this is the a same? different pump. Okay, so this has 18 millimeter. 18 millimeter. And then our specs were, what's it say on the side of this one? These are? 1900 at 1 1.9. Got it. So again, um, now doesn't, there's, one additional purpose or one additional need for the the flow tank, it uh, gives you know provides the ability for the pump to have a high pressure soap injection system, mm -hmm. where the pump is actually pass it or the solution can pass through the pump so that you can apply soap at full pressure mm -hmm. spray as opposed to having to drop into a, a low pressure for a soap injector, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's an adjustable injection system where your soap injector on your 1122 is is one one volume, uh, you know, one steady volume of 10 to one. This you can increase and decrease. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the ratio of output is. Cool, because normally a soap injection would be on the low pressure side, right? Right, you'd be feeding it into the stream outbound going to the, you know, before the hose reel and in the case of the, the 1122, 2017 and 2020. Here, the soap is being introduced in, uh, before the pump and will come out, you know, whether you're spraying at low pressure or high pressure. Okay, yeah, because we talked about that in our deep dive. In order to get soap injection, you turn the unloader, you unload a bit of the pressure. Well, not turning the unloader, you switch positions on the nozzle, uh, which opens up the orifice size and drops uh, the pressure down. Okay. Oh, that you need a soap nozzle. Soap nozzle, to... and well, those have the variable nozzle. If, you mm. know, if you're using the so tools. there's a soaping the soap using position. Right. Got it. Okay. So, but why would we for washing cars? We don't want either one of those. Yeah, so not for washing matter. cars around your house. We would normally use an external foam cannon, you know, on the actual you know on the end of the land, so we yeah. get maximum foaming because this would be really really watery. So, I mean, yeah, you're, gonna... you're not going to get the foaming action you get out of the foam right. cannon. Right. You're, uh, 
you know, you're... It's a specialty application. Yeah, you're probably going for something where it's, you know, if you're degreasing an engine and you're, you know, mm -hmm. getting ready to rebuild a motor for, you know... Sure. So this, um, this the, the 499 has a 20 amp power cord. Right. The 399 has a normal 15 amp power cord. So right. that's the that's the difference and then you have some some spec differences. So the the the, the 399 I think was what 1.6 GPM yep. at 1600 psi. Right. Uh, whereas this is 1.9 GPM at, at 1900. 1900 so we gain a little pressure and flow with the extra amperage draw. Mm -hmm. uh, and what do you think this thing just running in is probably going to is it going to draw what 16 17 amps? Uh, well if you're yeah. using a full pressure and flow you're about 19 and a half amps got it so it's right at the limit of a 20 amp circuit so now 599 i've sold a bunch of these so what's the deal what what size pump is this so the the 599 uses an am series pump mm -hmm. versus the apg series pump okay this apg pump is 18 millimeter plunger this uh, AM series pump is a 20 mil millimeter plunger. Mm. Uh, this isn't the actual plunger. This is for the 700, which we'll get to. Mm -hmm. It uh, The plunger in this model, actually, no. Uh, forgive Cut me. that. Say that again. Yeah. This also uses an 18 millimeter plunger. That's right. Yeah. I have it mixed up. This is an 18 millimeter plunger also, but the plungers that go into the 599 have a longer uh, a longer shaft, mm -hmm. so you get a longer stroke in the AM series pump, so you've got a, a steeper wobble plate. Okay. And uh, this has a shallower uh, wobble, so the the, the rating, rating spec on is, is twenty four hundred to two and a half gallons a minute. But we have a monster twenty five amp. This was like what you would plug your dryer into. Uh, approximately, yeah. Yeah, so you would have Dryer, to have... stove, you've got... Yeah, you'd have to have... Well, it's a, actually only drawing 15 amps, but it is a 230, you know, 220 to 230 volt. Got it, okay. So 15 amp circuit, but two, two, 220, 230. Yeah, you're doubling your voltage, so you have, have twice as much... Uh, so you can't water. just walk around the house with something like this. You would need to have that type of power. You'd have to have specialty plugs all over the place, wherever you're going to use it, operate this thing. Right. Uh, and then the quadros do come with a longer hose, a much bigger, uh, much bigger. Are they close to 100 feet, 100 foot hose? No, I think that the... It's 75. I think it's so those, 20 meters. Okay, so those are 15 meters, yeah, which 15. is 49 feet and change, and so these are going to be like 60, 70 feet. Yeah, something you know, roughly. like that. Okay, so 18 millimeter pump, but you can see the size difference of this. This has a bigger electric motor in yeah, it. Yeah, you've got a 3.4 3 horsepower. Uh -huh. So from your, you know, your 15 amp uh, 110 volt machine, the motor the horsepower of this motor is more than double. Okay. And that's why we need more power. More right. Power. And then we have the Monster. So this is the 700. This sucker, uh, <clears throat> this is a newer variant of what I have on my wall at my house. So right. I have a K165 STS right. on my wall. Um, this one is bigger these are 20 millimeter is that these, this is a 20 millimeter pump the mm -hmm. aq so this goes you know this pump is the same size that would go on a 13 horsepower gas engine mm -hmm. okay. so it's it's a beast so this is a 25 amp yeah i think your uh, yeah. spec sticker is over here on the side by your leg oh, it's right here oh there it is so this one is a 23 amp 3.3 gpm 2700 psi or 2,500 PSI. And what's your horsepower rating? Uh, right there? I think it's five, five horsepower. Okay. Yeah, so this one, you know, would someone ask a question about their cleaning Gulf streams and, and larger jets and they needed to more, more juice, this is what you do. But the problem is, is if you gotta have this kind of connection. And I think if you were cleaning uh, aircraft, you're gonna do it in a shop that's equipped with that, you know, at least yeah. that much power supply. So, Larger plungers, larger, larger plungers. winding. Yeah, larger plungers, so Different. it's both larger diameter shafts and then also longer plunger shaft as well. Mm -hmm. So you're getting a lot more volume capability for pulling through that. You know, they're, uh, this pump, like I said, is, is sized for a variety of different motors. So mm -hmm. 
you know, they can, on some of the other models, they can pull all, uh, um, upwards of five gallons a minute in yeah. certain models. So this one has a 3 8 inch hose to bigger hose. Yep, also 20 meters. Okay. Yeah, so we have a, a much bigger, much more powerful machine. Now this, just to give you pricing ideas on these things, so a, a 700 is, let's see, these are, this is 29.80, so right at three grand. A 599 is 2270, a 499 is 1920, and a 399 is 1830, 1830 bucks. But then, you know, we've got, uh, you know, these are a couple hundred dollars in shipping to give these suckers to you because they're, they're, they're much, much bigger, much yes. more stout. We didn't put them up on the bench because we didn't want to have to yeah, lift them hoist together. Them. So I tell you what, let's go grab, um, let's just do this all in one video. Let's go grab the, uh, the stationary machines and we'll talk about those because they're pretty much the same thing. Sure. There's the 700. The 599. The 499 and 399 are the same footprint. Just different electronics. Of course, the 1122, which we all know and love. And then the 18 millimeter pump, 2017. And then slightly reconfigured electronics. This is, so this is the 15 amp version and that's the 20 amp 2020. So I'm always interested in this stuff, but here's the boxes. So this is what a 2017 box looks like. And then here's a the 700 TST, a big monster. So that's what that box, box looks like. And then this is a 599 TSTG. So that's what that one looks like. And so all of these, because their weight is more than 1122 they all have to ship on a pallet so just to give you an idea of what a how it would show up so this is a 499 box because they're just too big and heavy so what i'm working on is figuring out how to logistically ship these as efficiently as possible obviously if you're at a commercial location, it's less expensive than getting a lift gate, shipping in residential. But that's how they that's how they look when we when they put them on a pallet. All right, so these are our stationary machine options, right? So mm -hmm. let's start with the little ones, and we'll get into the big one. So, 1622, and then my 1322. Mm -hmm. I met with the Uwe and uh, Ludwig at uh, the Krenzlers at. You have to say uh, it with a German accent. Yeah, yeah, I can't. Uwe and Ludwig. So I met with them, and this, so the, the magic of this, the little, little black box on the side. Yep. So we changed the wobble, changed the windings, added the pressure switch, so we get 2.1 gallons per minute at 1,300 PSI mm -hmm. versus 1.5 gallons per minute at 1,600 PSI. But same motor, you know, same motor, same pump head as our 1122 we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. So they take the 1122, they turn it on the side, they get rid of the cart, and this is what we have. Yep. Uh, and so, really, um, there's, no, these are, there's no difference between this and the 1122, so this is a 14 millimeter, mm -hmm. so 14 millimeter pump mm -hmm. with um, total stop capability versus run all day. You know, this, this will continue to run. Uh, I actually a lot of times recommend for like mobile detailers that you just do the 1622. Uh, when you run that, I mean that draws quite a bit more current than the than the than the, six, the, the 1622 draws less current than the 1322. Especially does. because it's the highest in influx of current happens when the motor starts and stops. Uh -huh. So off a generator that won't run into as many issues as this will because every time it starts and stop you got that peak voltage yeah. or the peak wattage mm -hmm. uh the 1622 is not peaking as much because going in and out of bypass it doesn't have yeah. the same effect as as starting from mm, that uh, makes sense stop so then on the we make a huge jump so we skip the like the 2020 2017 so the 18 millimeter pump we skip so what, what was that again so this these were az pumps az so we skip over the apg altogether and which we go that was on your 165 mm -hmm. 
and then we go straight to the AQ 20 millimeter pump. Got it. So these do have the pressure switch. So this is the I didn't we didn't I didn't make you guys open up the the, the KWS uh, 700. Mm -hmm. This is the this is the three phase 1200 five gallon per minute monster. Right. Uh, so we can do this, but you have to have three phase or 440 volt three phase. They have that as well too. Right. So this one you need the appropriate power, which not all commercial facilities have. Most do, but not all have. So this one's five GPM. The one that I'm going to be putting at my house. So I'm going to be replacing my KWS. Uh, I'm sorry, my my K165, the pretty stainless steel for the KW uh, KWS 700, uh, mainly because it has. The, black, well, the red box on these, but it has the black box. So these turn off, whereas mine runs on a 30 second delay. Right. Uh, and plus, uh, I'll go from to my mine at my house is 2.8 gallons per minute to 3.3. So at uh, 2,400 PSI. Yeah, just like the 700 Quadro that we just took a look mm -hmm. at. So these pumps are quite a bit louder, aren't they? They're a little bit louder. I mean, <clears throat> the rating on on these units, according to Krenzla, is 91 okay. decibels. The rating on the smaller is 84 decibels. Okay. Um, the you know that's not an enormous jump, but it is louder. Because mine is pretty darn loud. I wonder. I wonder. Actually, we should. Go f I guess I can always do a comparison when I do one at my house. But uh, these are the ones that I've been putting in the 700 version of this. This is the one that I've been putting in more. You know, like more sophisticated garages. I have you know several several guys that I've sold these to that we put these in the garage. If you want some more output, you want it to be more stout. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, but it's amazing. I mean, you have this giant. You know, you have the giant transmission housing. The giant electric motor, but the pump head isn't all that. Doesn't look all that much different. Well, it's doesn't still look a whole lot bigger. It it is a pretty hefty size piece of brass. Mm -hmm. You know, the, it doesn't require it to be too much thicker mm -hmm. uh, because you are stepping up the Plunger diameter in addition to the length of the shaft. Um, but yeah, that's a it's still a pretty hefty pump. So this has the same twenty two or M uh, M twenty two um, connection. The output is the same as it is on all the other machines, and the inlet is a normal garden hose type fitting. Yep. Um, have you done any any custom install applications? Can you remove this and then go directly in? I mean, do they do the EC guys like hard plumb these, or is it still smart to do a flex line input to these? Well, things? for for a wall mount system, I recommend doing a more permanent water supply as opposed to the garden hose connection. Mm -hmm. And this also has a garden hose screen, mm -hmm. but for, you know, uh, most guys are gonna want some additional strainer at the inlet. So there's all sorts of filter strainer assemblies out there, whether they be a Y strainer that's made out of brass or mm -hmm. poly. Uh, there's also clear bowl filters or opaque bowl filters that are nice. They have, you know, uh, deep wells so that you don't have to be concerned with checking the the screen on a routine mm -hmm. basis. Um, so what do you think we should let, so let's talk about my house as an example. So I'm gonna put this on the wall. I'm gonna actually build a room for this specifically, this and an air compressor. Um, right now, the way I have mine set up is I have a, uh, we hard plumbed it with, um, uh, what is it, uh, Pro Press Copper. Okay. And then uh, my outlet, so the outlet, I ran uh, just a, a, a pressure, a high pressure hose up through conduit through the wall, through like a three inch conduit or you know, PVC pipe, and then I run it to my boom pole. Uh, do, how, would you, how would you plumb this? You use stainless? I mean, how do you, what's the way to do that? Oh, uh, well, that's more so a matter of preference. You're gonna wanna go with, with the materials that are rated for the pressure, mm. high pressure stainless pipe tubing can be quite expensive. Uh, and most stationary applications that we've had these systems and the predecessor, like your K165, our customers will often just run high pressure hose. They just- Through the wall. Yeah, yeah, just wire braided hose through the wall or, you know, in a lot of cases it's not going through the wall. It's like a warehouse facility where yeah, it's just going up, up, up the, the wall with the rest of the piping and then over to wherever, like you said, okay. your boom pole or yeah. hose reel. The water supply side, we usually take the garden hose off, install our filter, and then have a hose barb connection so that we can use a flexible line from the- uh, from A barb, barb type fitting, and then you just do an ear clamp. 
clamp it on and yeah. call it a day. Because then for, a, for serviceability, if it has to be removed, I don't actually have to unscrew anything to take it off. Ah, uh, okay, now that's smart. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So uh, let's go um, Let's go in the shop. I'd, I'd like to fire up a couple of these. Like I've never heard of 599. Uh, so we're gonna grab the cameras and run over into the shop, fire up a couple of these, and then we'll, we'll wrap up this video. You guys know what the, the, one, the 1622, the 1322 sound like, the 1122, but I'm interested in like, uh, probably the, we can, since the 499's already been used, we can fire up the 499 and, and that'll sound the same as the 2017 and the 2020. And then maybe we'll fire up this bad boy and see what this sucker sounds like. I'm just sort of interested in how this, how this thing works. Maybe we can hook up a, a hose and pull the trigger on it and see how it goes. Sure. So let's run it. We'll run over to the shop and, uh, and, and show you guys that stuff in a second. So on this, you could, you can cut this to length, right? Yes. So most of the time you're going to hardwire this? Yeah. Most of our, most applications it's going to get hardwired. Now you, there's benefits to having a plug so that you can have a service disconnect. So in the event that you want to, if you need to take it down to service it, uh. you want to disconnect it, you can just pull it off the wall as opposed to having a... Oh yeah, that's what I didn't think about that. So, yeah. but it's, it's a matter of preference. Some guys would prefer to have it wired Got directly it. into a... Oh, so what do I need to to wire this thing? What what do I need to not this one, but the 700? So the the KWS 700. What 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 I need at my house? So I need to run 10 gauge wire. I mean, what what do I need to get that? that well, that? the machine's going to come with a length of the cable already installed. Okay. So I have to look. I'm not sure if it has the plug on there or not. I have to look in the box. But uh, if a plug isn't, isn't supplied, then you'd have to get the suitable NEMA style plug for the style of receptacle that's installed. And uh, then, and like I said, you don't have to worry about the gauge. And then but this should have its own breaker. Oh yeah, it definitely should have an isolated circuit. Got it, own breaker, own line, dedicated line run to this. So this will be good. We'll get to see and hear the Monster, the five, five GPM version. And then in the future, you'll get to see and hear the 3.3 GPM version when I put it at my house. And there's a different gauge on this one. Thinking. So even though this is big and expensive and fancy, there's not really any difference. You plug it into the wall, get your garden hose hooked up to it and then you have a pressure washer hose that comes out of it so what about um the whole running it you know running water beforehand it's best i guess if that. you're plumbed and you have water in it all the time really doesn't matter does it if you're hard plumbed right unless of course you're purging it in some manner to uh yeah. in florida i don't have to yeah This does not total stop. This has a 30 second delay also. So, see on there, you're getting about 4.3, 4.4 with no nozzle. That's what five five GPMs like. Yeah, it's quite a bit more output. Yeah, this is louder. This these, this needs to be in another room. Yeah. So what pressure are we at? 24 here, 22 at the nozzle. 22. Yeah, see, I would. Well, what happens to this machine when I bring it down to 1,000? So you have it on like an 11? I guess it would probably be like a 10. Here's a 12. Oh, is it a soft wash nozzle? Well, it's a J rod. Right now you're at 800 psi, 900 on this gauge. 
Okay, so on an 11. I'm 11. I have a 10. Let me, oh. go, get, let me go get a 10. Yeah, that's moving some water. Yeah, so this does have a 30 second delay. I wonder if the KW with the 700 does this too. Yeah, so 11.0 is probably on this big, on this sucker. Yep. Probably the way to go. Yeah, 11's not an orifice size that we stuck. Yeah, that's, that's cool. You like that 65 degree? <laughs> nice little, broad that's a little, spray, little, right? Yeah, a little too much. Maybe for rinsing would probably be kind of cool. So it's filling up the road here, huh? Yeah. How big is that tank? Um, probably holds about a gallon. Yeah. Hmm. This sounds quieter to me than a darn 1122. Maybe because it has bigger compartment. Yeah. Fourteen hundred of the gauge. There you go. That feels like a lot more than. and 1.9 gallons a minute. And this is the tricky part with the, uh, this isn't doing me any help. It's only filling up at the rate that it's demanding. Yeah. But I mean, this is. Yeah, see, look, yeah, the tank makes it go goofy. Shoot. Now, like I said, this is also a 499. Nice and quiet, yeah. I just wanted to see how they, how it works. I think the Quadro is the way to go. And then we drop out the, the board. Well, in a perfect world, we drop out the wobble too.